Good morning, school. Very warm welcome to the chapel this morning. Please have a seat. Today, we welcome Ollie and Jimmy, chapel prefects. Uh, they're going to lead us in chapel this morning on the theme of courage. Courage is a particularly pertinent theme for this week. This week, Two and a half billion people are celebrating or commemorating what we call Holy Week, a week that goes from Sunday to Sunday and actually focuses on the central events in the last week of the life of one we know as Jesus of Nazareth, of course, the pioneer and author of the faith of St. Paul of Tarsus. And as part of Holy Week, Christians around the world make a journey, a spiritual pilgrimage through the various events of the life of Jesus in that last week. Christians will be gathered all over the world in all sorts of different places and spaces to mark and remember those key events. His triumphant entry into a city that was swollen with his own people, estimated up to two million people that day back in AD 30. Uh, one who was held as king and messiah, one who was then turned upon by the authorities of this day because they didn't trust him. And they didn't like his message of peace and light and love and justice. It challenged their own positions and their own corrupt sense of power. And so they silenced him. There was an arrest at night, a trial at night, and then a crucifixion on the day we know as Good Friday, or formerly God Friday. And then they buried him, and that was the end. And on Thursday, here in chapel, with our service of communion, when we celebrate bread and wine, a symbolic meal of the Last Supper of Christ, we also remember that that was not the last word on the life of this person we know as Jesus. We're sat here today because of the last word on his life, which was new life and which was resurrection. If that hadn't happened, you'd all be at Hamilton Boys High right now, or Whangarei, or Tauranga, or Rotorua, or wherever that school might be, that state school might be. The story connects us directly together, and we'll be looking at that. We've got this cross here, made by a student a good number of years ago, a barbed wire cross, a stark reminder of suffering, a stark reminder of an instrument of torture that was used to silence a voice of hope and love and goodness, and yet that didn't actually happen in the end. This barbed wire cross also reminds us, connects us with the work of what agencies around the world like Amnesty International. People that still work for justice in those dark and difficult places around the world today. The use of barbed wire is a symbol that some people are not free like we are. That some people continue to be silenced where their human rights are violated. Where they're imprisoned because of what they believe, not because of what they've done. So that cross also sits here during Holy Week this year, and on Thursday it will be transformed during our Easter celebration. That's what it sits there for, as a metaphoric, prayerful, symbolic reminder of actually what we celebrate and enjoy this morning is not the case for so many other people around the world and hasn't been for many, many centuries. So let us now gather as we reflect on the courage of Christ and the courage we're all called to display in our own lives as we meet in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for humanity, you sent your Son, Jesus, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us an example of great humility. Mercifully grant that we too may have the courage to walk in the way of the cross and share in the resurrection through the one who is our Saviour and Redeemer and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Stand for our opening hymn
which is, with bated breath, the servant song. Let's stand to sing the servant song. A reading from Psalm 27, verse 1 to 26. David writes about his confidence in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my, the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. As we enter Easter, a time marked with themes of renewal, hope, and rebirth, it's a great moment to talk about one of the most important virtues, courage. Throughout his life, Jesus had to be courageous multiple times. He had to be courageous when he challenged the corrupt authority of his days, which unfortunately led to his death. But up until he died, he always had courage in his teachings and in God. This courage that Jesus taught us transcends the differences that each one of us have finding a place at the heart of humanity. It's not only about facing our fears, but standing up for what's right and stepping forward into the unknown with resilience and determination. In its essence, courage is not the absence of fear, but the decision to continue forward despite it. It's about making choices that showcase our deepest values, even when those choices lead us through challenging and uncertain paths. I want you to raise your hand if you've ever been in a situation where you needed a little bit of extra courage. This could be trying out a new activity or giving a talk up here on stage. Hopefully right now, everyone's hands are up. As in our daily lives, there are many situations where we need a little bit of extra courage to get us through our day. But how do we get through these situations? How do we push past the fears and anxieties in these moments? Today I want to share with everyone here in the chapel today a strategy that I learned earlier this year. In late January, I went up to Auckland to attend the World Vision Senior Scholars Summit, a four day long experience where I, alongside 35 other young minds from across New Zealand, got to experience talks and activities that would help develop our leadership skills. At this event, one of the speakers was a young couple named Matt and Rachel. One thing that Rachel talked to us about that has stuck with me since is the 10 seconds of courage. What does this mean exactly? Well, say you're coming up to give a talk here on the lectern. You may be feeling extremely nervous and maybe not even wanting to do it. But all it takes is 10 seconds of a little extra courage to start saying something. And hopefully by the time the 10 seconds is over, you have enough, 
you, you will have enough confidence to continue speaking and get you through whatever you need to do. This strategy is not just for giving a talk up here on the lectern. You can use the 10 seconds of courage anytime whenever you feel like you need a little bit of extra courage to get you through your day. The narrative of Easter is surrounded by themes of sacrifice, overcoming darkness, and the triumph of light. This can serve as a powerful metaphor for the journey each of us undertakes in the pursuit of personal growth and societal betterment. Whether one observes Easter as a religious holiday or not, the story encases a universal truth that from hardship can emerge great strength and transformation. We can all learn from the Easter story with respect to courage. It takes courage for what you, to stand up for what you think is right, even though others in places of power might not see eye to eye. As we know from the, from the Easter story, Jesus stood up for what he knew was right and lost his life because of it. And even though he knew that, that would never stop him. In this time, let us draw inspiration from those who have exemplified courage. Consider the activists who brave opposition to advocate for a better world as Jesus did. The strength of innovators who persist despite failure to bring their visions to life and the quiet strength of individuals overcoming personal struggles. Each story is a testament to the power of the human spirit. Courage also calls for observation and the willingness to confront our own limitations, biases and fears. It challenges us to grow, to change and to extend our hands to others in support in their time of need. The beauty of this virtue lies in its ability to transform not just individuals, but communities and societies at large. We reflect on the meaning of this time. Let us consider how we can embody courage in our daily lives. It might mean taking a stand for what we believe in, stepping out of our comfort zones, or simply being there for someone in their time of need. Every act of courage, no matter how small, contributes to the collective strength of humanity. In embracing courage, we open ourselves to the possibilities of renewal and growth. Like the cycle of death and rebirth represented in the Easter story, our own lives are a series of endings, beginnings, challenges, and victories. By facing these with courage, we pave the way for new beginnings and the realization of our fullest potential. This Easter, let us celebrate the spirit of courage in the stories that inspire us, in the lives of those around us and within ourselves. Let it be a time of renewal, not just in the seasonal sense, but in the personal and collective strides we make towards a kinder and braver world. This season, inspire yourself and others to embrace courage in all of its forms, leading to the transformation and growth in your own lives and the lives of those around you. Thank you. Let us pray. God of life and love, we come before you in prayer today as we prepare for our Easter celebrations. Be with us as a school community as we remember this week the events that Easter is remembered for throughout the world. Help us to remember and to understand that not all people welcomed your message of life, love, light, and peace. Help us to remember the courage you had when confronted by those who were opposed to you. Lord Jesus, as we remember this week the trial you endured, your suffering on a Roman cross and death by crucifixion, keep us mindful that you held true to the end. In all of our trials and sufferings in life, help us to remember that Easter speaks to us a message that light will drive out darkness, courage can overcome fear, peace is stronger than violence, love is healthier than hate, and ultimately life is always stronger than death. Lord, give us today the courage we need to live out lives worthy of your calling upon us. In Jesus' name we pray, the life giver and the pain bearer. Amen. It is now time for silent prayer and reflection. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we pray together in English. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Kia ora koutou. I just want to acknowledge you, Jimmy and Ollie, for the gift of your talk, your corridor this morning on, on the theme of courage. Some really important, pertinent points there for us. Of course, courage is not about the absence of fear. Okay? A lot of things frighten us. There's a wonderful line in our service of night prayer that we say every Sunday night that it goes like this, let the fears of our own lives rest in you. A lot of our fears are external. The fears that Jesus would have faced were external. The threat of violence from others. That's a very real threat for so many people around the world, even ourselves at times today. But also so many of those fears we have are internal ones. Things that rise up within us that we're afraid of. The shadows of our own lives. Am I good enough? Am I liked enough? Am I enough? All those internal things come up and we need courage to manage those and deal with those sometimes. And this theme of Holy Week is really around that kind of space about standing up, standing strong, standing firm and just believing in yourself and accessing that God-given courage that you have, that we all have within us, regardless of our faith, regardless of the narrative that we use to describe how we approach the deeper meaningful things of life, whatever that might be for us as individuals, we still have this ability. It is there. Trust in it. And Jimmy and Ollie have gifted us something really special today as we make our own pilgrimage through this week, through this, through this Holy Week. Thank you, boys. Round of applause. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Ollie. So just a couple of notices from me. Applications are open for Cambodia. Thanks to those who showed up and arrived on Sunday night online and in person. Uh, they will close on April the 3rd, so that's next week. Uh, great to have ukulele today. Even better, we've got Harry Fort with us. That name won't mean much to anybody here. Great proud leader of Clark House back in 2018 as a year 13. And he was the author and the pioneer of St. Joan's ukulele. And it's great he's going to be here. That's him there on the with the red arrow sticking at his head, but he's going to be here leading ukulele today. So those who have signed up for ukulele today will meet at 12.40, in for a treat to meet Crazy Funny Harry, and he's training to be a teacher at the moment as well at Waikato Uni, so he's hoping to do a placement here at some point, so I'm sure we'll welcome him with open arms. Thank you, everyone, for your support for the charity day last week. I haven't got final figures yet, but I'll let you know when we do. The one before last Charity Day, when we supported Cancer Society and Kids Can, had a lovely little message from Kids Can. They were overwhelmed by the donation. And um, Bridgetta, the lady who runs the uh, Waikato branch of Kids Can, said this, your school's donations helped to provide 70 children with shoes and socks. It was pretty awesome, actually. Just those little things, selling a few cakes, sticking your jeans on in your hoodies, and you ended up giving 70 kids shoes and socks for school. So well done. Thank you for your support for these, for these amazing programs. Let's just bow our heads, pray God's blessing upon us before we depart this Friday into the week, into this holy week. Mindful of our own fears, the fears that rest within us, those we perceive as external fears. Mata Mali Atata Koi Ne Tai Te Fakaru Ete Aki Akoto Naka Akoto Hininalo Ulota Ia Karaiti Ihu Aki Amo Ki Uhoki Ki Akoto Te Manaki Atua Kalarawa Ata Mato Te Tamata Wadu Tapu Aine A Aku Tonu Atu Amine. So may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us. Be upon all those who are afraid today. Be upon all those whom we care for, pray for, and carry within us this day and always. Amen. 
So just a reminder, Thursday's Holy Communion, bread and wine, remembering the Last Supper, the last meal Jesus shared with his friends before his crucifixion, where he invited them to take bread and to wine and simply use those things to remember him, to remember his life, remember his story, his teaching, his courage, his communication of light and love and peace and all that, and we'll celebrate all that in here on Thursday morning. Some of you, this will be unfamiliar. For others, very familiar. We have our Easter story, our inter-house thigh-slapping dad joke competition. So each house hopefully has got a really amazing, funny joke for us, where somebody's going to stand up here and tell that joke on Thursday morning. Has each house got your joke? Yep, well done. Thank you, Sam. That's uh, huge prizes as well. We've got an Easter egg hunt in here as well on Thursday. The Easter bunny may or may not be here if he's not too busy or she's not too busy. And here, yeah, heaps of other fun stuff as well, as well as this very special spiritual moment as well as we break bread and share wine together to conclude this holy week. So let's, A2, please stand for our final hymn and aid. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. So we conclude with the grace of St. Paul in Tereo and then in English. Kieto kia tato katoa, te atafaya te tato ariki a ihu karaiti, me te araha o te atua, me te whipina tai tanga, ki te wairu tapu, ake, 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 amene. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon us all forever and ever. Amen. So let's go in the love of God, the peace of Christ, the dignity of the Holy Spirit. Be strong, be happy, be holy. Thank you, Mr. Dunlop.